practical thing. It's a just to allow you to be and express. Uh, I get lost in the conversation. Well, well um, I, I was asking about the connection between your military experience and, you, and, and your art. And, um, and uh, uh, um, even though you said, I don't see any connection, you then went on to say the that, that in both of them, you're living on the edge. You're, you're, you're moving into the unknown. I think, well, yeah, but I can drop back and say that bike was the edge, too. I didn't realize that I couldn't put it into words. Yeah. You don't put that very much in the words at 13, I don't think, right. that, that hold all the way through. But it was the same kind of stuff. And wherever I found it, it has turned me on greatly. Mm -hmm. And I found it in painting because, as I was going to say, the now knowing how to paint, uh, there are many, many things that you can do that are, they're not artifice, they're, they're things you can do that make things better. Well, it's very easy to do those and make something without making a painting. That isn't painting. Mm -hmm. That's knowing how to paint and using it, but maybe it shouldn't be used. You're using it because you happen to know it. So in a way, um, it's harder now. You have to break through that kind of thing, too, in order to stay alive with it. Mm -hmm. that, that, that otherwise, it, it, it becomes um, routine. It becomes, it becomes dead for you. And, well, it's never been that, so yeah. I don't think it'll ever become it for me. But it's very, it's mine. What I do and what other people see in it or whatever happens in the art, the art field, I won't even talk about it. I mean, that's, the more esoteric an endeavor is, the worse the field is, the business end of it. It gets pretentious. It gets all kinds of things. And it's not only in art. It goes into ballet and it goes into all kinds of very fine endeavors. Mm -hmm. But that's a business end. That's something yeah. else. The yeah. actual doing it to be involved in, um, for me, it's never changed. Yeah. Um, why, um, why did you come back to Colorado to ask me? I've been playing tennis since I was probably 10 years old. I love it. Absolutely loved it. And in Spain, uh, that continued. Um, we're getting some noise from behind. In Spain, that continued. And on the coast, uh, uh, when we were there, I played a little, but not very much. We went back into Yeguas. I actually built a court there uh -huh. and played a lot of tennis. I mean, I was in love with it. The kids were on their way by that time uh, when they were about 15 years old. I like to say we kicked them out of the house. Barbie goes, ah, like this. No, but we encouraged them out, and they did. They went out on their own, but people watching and, you know, the places where there was a contact and got in life started, which is what we would have liked to have done ourselves mm -hmm. and took longer. Anyway, I was playing tennis. I got quite good. Enjoyed it very much. Our kids are out of the house completely. And uh, we were part of a tennis club on the coast, Lou Hode and a English, a Australian uh, tennis star back in his years. And I was playing for the club championship. And I'm playing a young guy, actually a Turk, uh, who I didn't get along with at all. And I'm winning. Mm -hmm. And he got very mad at one point. And he's screaming on the other side of the net, some shot was wrong, and I must have said, uh, whatever it is, you know. Came running at me, jumped with a racket, and went whang. And in doing so, caught me here, broke my sinus, my jaw, blew out my left bundle branch. So, I, it's 1982, I'm 50, what, eight years old or something or other, and I'm in trouble. I'm fibrillating once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. And I have no electrical branch and a, not a good prognosis. Came into the States, had it checked and this and that. And they said, you know, you've got five or ten years. You've got, you got a problem. And there's nothing you can do about it except enjoy life and good diet and this and that. So life did change a lot. I hung around for about eight years at Yeguas in our mm -hmm. home. And then it became very clear, getting hauled away in the middle of the night, that I wasn't going to make it. And we're, we're not going to be able to see grandchildren that haven't been born yet. And we came back to the States, 1990. I gave up. And it was a good move. It uh, came in Aspen to take a look. It's a great place to come with a, 
a hard problem, right? <laughs> well, it turned out to be yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I fell in love all over again, and I think it kept me alive. Uh -huh. and, it, um, and it sounds like you, you got very active in um, wilderness activities once you got, you got active in wilderness well, activities. Well, that's why once I came, came out here. here. Barb loves the city, I love the wilderness, and I hate machines, always have. And uh, I managed to buy an old Toyota and a $80 snowmobile from T Lazy 7, and I took off on it and never been on a, anything in my life and in a machine back country. And over the period, which was 1991 until two years ago, I've been over 500 times back country above tree level alone. Maybe a dozen and a half of those times with somebody I was taking out to show and to experience it.